Toes is invention. Um, I'm breathing a lot better today, um, and it, it's because of this stuff right here. It's called MSM, and I used to take uh, take MSM in the form of capsules, these things right here, but um, but basically that uh, is not cutting it anymore. I would have to take like 30 of the things. And instead, I use bulk MSM now, and I just have about maybe a tablespoon and a half in the palm of my hand, and it is the most vile tasting stuff imaginable. Take it in the powder, drink some water, and choke it down, but boy, does it help with, uh, it's a strong anti-inflammatory as, or it's an anti-inflammatory, and uh, it's also uh, a good anti-cancer medication. So I'm just, and it's about as toxic as water, so um, you can't really overdose on it. So I just, I'm taking like probably about six teaspoons a day, and it helps a lot. Um, but anyway, as your forward scout, uh, I would, it's important for me to tell you the good things and the bad things about things that I have encountered in my life you know, uh, cancer amongst other things, but, uh, but it's also important to let you guys know, um, that there are hazards, um, and there's, this is, this hazard is in the Bitcoin realm. Um, I had all those old paper wallets in my files and my crazy thieving, insane, uh, and now homeless sister, uh, she uh, she basically hates anybody who is more successful than she is, which means she basically hates almost everybody in the world. And <laughs> because she is, you know, completely inept and unable to do anything, you know, um, and pretty much everybody is more successful than she is. So she's got a lot of people to hate. And I was her primary target because... I've done pretty well for myself as a mechanic, amongst other things. But so she stole my Bitcoin backup, Bitcoin wallets, and birth certificate, truck title, uh, truck titles, uh, and um, and all that. But one of the things that she did take were some backup paper wallets for bitcoins, and it's conceivable that she could have gotten a hold of the passwords for those paper wallets which I keep in an undisclosed location. And um, and basically, if she had some competent help, uh, she could conceivably have stolen about a million dollars from me. So, um, so I took some action, created some new paper wallets because I don't feel like driving to go get my treasure. <laughs> and, uh, and then basically... Um, um, so then I shoved, and then basically I did almost all of them, except for one uh, one last one, a smaller one. And I am, I've reached the point, you know, with the cancer and the fact I'm not working and shit, um, where I'm actually spending Bitcoins instead of buying them. And, um, and what I did was, it was a, it was a wallet that had 16 grand in it. And... Well, I probably shouldn't have even said that, but I spent uh, some of it um, and then I was going to send the other half of it to uh, to um, uh, another paper wallet. But then 
it turned out that as soon as I went back to the paper wallet, the Bitcoins were gone. So I lost an undisclosed amount of money. Uh, it's not catastrophic or anything, but it is. it really exposes one hazard uh, that you can run into when you're when you use paper wallets you can with some programs such as the mycelium app uh, you can spend from a paper wallet like you can send a certain amount of money instead of the entire amount but if you use a, a different app like uh, coinomi for example all you can do is sweep the paper wallet um, completely right so that is the smarter way to go because there must be, you know, I'm theorizing here, but there must be miners or people with very powerful computers that are sitting there programmed to constantly watch the blockchain for old style um, Bitcoin addresses, which suddenly spend only part of their amount and leave another part in the wallet, right? And I have never heard of this ever happening before, although it may have. Uh, so I figured it was safe because I had because it's a it's a danger, kind of like quantum computing, right? People say quantum computing is a hazard, right? But chances are it's only a hazard if you reuse Bitcoin addresses, like basically I did. Um, so there must be some people out there with some seriously strong computers basically mining the blockchain for any paper wallet which is spent um, partially um, or any Bitcoin address which is partly spent and leaving some money in that same address. 99% of all the wallets available now uh, do not reuse addresses. What they do is they, they send a transaction out and at the same time they send another transaction to, to, to another Bitcoin address, which the wallet generates using your seed phrase. Uh, those 12 or 24 words that you write down when you first open the wallet or when you first set up the wallet. Well, anyway, um, if you, um, if, um, so basically that is a vulnerability for paper wallets. If you are using, if you still have some old paper wallets laying around, as I still do, um, well, they won't be laying around long because I'm going to uh, get my IV. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where it is, but um, when I'm there, I'm going to lock that freaking paper wallet, those paper wallets, into my safe deposit box, and um, and then they'll be out of my house, you know? So basically, if anybody comes to uh, get those paper wallets, the only thing they will run into is this with the laser sight, and that will be pointed right at their forehead just before they lose consciousness for all eternity. But, um, but basically, um, so anybody who, um, so basically anybody who has paper wallets First of all, if you have any significant amount of Bitcoin in them, get them out of your house. Um, and that includes my, tr tr well, my treasure as well. Um, don't keep that much money at home. Uh, it's just stupid. Um, and, if you, um, and if you have paper wallets and you are going to move money out of them, uh, take basically move it all move it all into some electronic wallet like mycelium app coinomi any number of apps although it will not work for uh it will not work for the uh for like um for exchanges mostly because a lot of them have limitations on how much money you can send to them so um basically um um, send it to just a regular phone wallet or a PC wallet, something you control. And then from the PC wallet, if you want to make another paper wallet or, or use a paper wallet which is, has never been used before, you can then send money to that paper wallet if you're still using them. Or pop it into your Trezor, 
um, or um, you know spend them as you wish. Uh, I've never, I haven't put money into a paper wallet except for these emergency, this emergency situation with my thieving ass freaking criminal uh, homeless retarded sister. <laughs> uh, she basically, I would not have messed with it, but I, I would require, I would not have messed with paper wallets, but it's a drive to get to my treasure, so. And it's the weekend, <laughs> so I really didn't have time to do it, you know. So, there you are. So, um, on Monday, I will no longer have that much money in my house. So, uh, other than that, uh, yes. The takeaway for this whole freaking video is do not partially spend from a Bitcoin address, um, whether it's in a paper wallet or a... Uh, or an old-fashioned phone wallet that reuses addresses, always um, spend all of the money from an address, just like modern wallets do. Because if you don't, you are vulnerable to uh, to these mining attacks where they uh, see the partial key which you broadcast to unlock the address and send the bitcoins. And then with a lot of number crunching and probably a lot of luck, uh, they manage to, uh, they can probably sometimes, probably not all the time, but sometimes they can find the rest of the key and then unlock the rest of those Bitcoins and sweep the wallet. And that little lesson cost me a significant amount of money, but it's not, not significant to me, but it is significant, you know, to a lot of people. So yeah, be careful out there. People are going to try to take your Bitcoins. Do not let them do that. And don't get married.